Oh, yeah. All right. This week, I am going to turn with you to Isaiah 61. And it goes like this. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Now, when this was given to Isaiah, it was during the, excuse me, it was during the period of captivity of everyone in Babylon. So you can kind of note why he's saying this to the children of Israel. First of all, the only ones that were left in Jerusalem were the very, very poor. And they were kind of left by themselves with not a lot of support, not a lot of encouragement, not a lot of anything. And so the first thing it says is, I'm going to preach good news to the poor. Because they were the ones left alone by themselves in Jerusalem. They had no hope. Well, the good news was, is that everybody was going to come back. And so they had good news to know that, all right, It's going to be okay. Everybody's coming back. We're going to be able to rejoice together. We're going to be able to live better. All of the rest that goes along with that. He sent me to build up the brokenhearted. Well, the brokenhearted were the ones that were actually taken to Babylon. They'd lost everything. It wasn't home. They didn't want to be there. They didn't belong there and they were just heartbroken that they could not be in their own land being able to worship the God that they love. And they were broken hearted. And Jesus said, or well, the prophet says, he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. He was going to be able to put some salve or in uh, medical terms a bandage around their heart and be able to bring it together so that it can be mended again and they were going to be able to go back home. Now I didn't read the stuff at the end but if you read farther on it says they will be called the oaks of righteousness a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore and place the places long devastated. So everything was going to come back together again. And they were going to be able to be restored and refreshed. And so that's what he was to do, was to heal their broken hearts and bring them back home where they can worship their God. To proclaim freedom for the captives. It's it's almost similar, he says, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Well, if you look at it, there's there's almost two different types because the captives were the ones like Daniel, those that were taken from Israel and placed in captivity, and they were there to serve the king. They were to do all of that. They didn't have the freedom to do a lot of things that they wanted to although we've noted when we talked about Daniel Daniel still kept praying Daniel still kept doing his his faithful time with God continually even though he was in captivity and he was able to do that the prisoners were those that got sent down into the depths into the jail the ones that didn't get to serve the king the ones that were just sent down there where they probably had poor food or if food at all and they had nothing to be able to sustain themselves or keep them strong or keep themselves going and he was to give them release from the darkness they could come out of the dark pits and they were still free to go home 
because the law and the decree that was made was that anyone can go back to Jerusalem. Now that's what it was in Isaiah's time. But I want you to turn to Luke chapter 4 with me. Chapter 4, verse 14. Let's read there. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In Isaiah it was my servant. And Jesus later on says, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I am the servant. I am the one God has sent. This has been fulfilled today in your hearing. But what does it mean here in this process, in this passage? This didn't refer to Israel in captivity anymore. This referred to what Jesus was going to do when he came to this world. What effect was he going to have on this world? What did he want to accomplish? He wanted to preach good news to the poor, first of all. Same thing. Those that are down and out, discouraged, have no hope, can't do it on themselves, have no ability to be able to accomplish those things, Jesus came to say, guess what? I've brought you hope. I've brought you help. I've brought to you the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. And that changes will begin in you. And then he goes on and, he's, <clears throat> and says, He sent me <clears throat> to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. <clears throat> this isn't those that are in jail, physical jail. It's not for those that have done wrong and <clears throat> like those that were in. Babylon were sitting there with hardly any food to eat or anything and stuff and were barely, you know, nice, barely been nice to. This is because Jesus came to do a spiritual work. He came to release the prisoners of Satan. Ever since the first day when Adam and Eve sinned, we have become prisoners of Satan. This world is prisoners of Satan. He's kept us down as much as he possibly could. He's taken away from us all of the freedom of ability to serve God. He's commanded his right to rule us and to do with us what he wanted because we chose him over God and Jesus said I have come to set you free I've come to give you freedom of life I've come to give you freedom and release from those prison bars that are in front of you that you can't seem to get past and you don't have the key to unlock it but guess what I have that key to unlock it 
and to set you free. It wasn't bars in front of them they couldn't unlock. It was the chains of sin they couldn't unlock. And I picture it more of rather than having jail bars in front of us, it's more like they've got the shackles on their hands and the ball on their ankles and stuff to hold them down and keep them back so that they couldn't go where they wanted to, when they wanted to. Freedom for the prisoners. And recovery of sight for the blind. Now we know that when Jesus was walking around, he healed the blind, right? He set them free so that they could see again. Every time he did it, did you notice that he usually did a different method? One time he, said he took some clay and spit on it and put it in the guy's eyes and then cleaned it out and he could see. Another time they did, that he did something else. So it wasn't about a method for Jesus. It was about the ability to do it. But I don't believe this talks only about physical blindness being healed. It talks about the spiritual blindness that the world is under. That's why you notice in one of the prayers that Paul reads in Ephesians 1.18, he says, And I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. that we might be able to have all the shackles taken off of our spiritual eyes, that we might see freely the things that Christ has come to do in our lives and to be able to take care of. He wants us set free. He doesn't want us to be bound by blindness. Some of us, we may just have kind of uh, cataracts over our spiritual eyes. It's not like you're totally blind, you know, but you can't see clearly, you can't notice things perfectly and stuff. And Jesus came to give you a cataract surgery from your heart. Some of us may be totally blind and can't see anything. And Jesus said, I can come and change your retina of your heart. And I can give you a brand new one so that you can see clearly what it is I'm asking of you and what I want to do in your heart and in your life. Some of us have been blind for a long time. This world is so full of sin and we are so corrupt. And it's like the man that Jesus said was blind from birth and the disciples said, why? Did he sin or did somebody else sin? And Jesus said, no, it's just for my glory just so I can be here and do it so you can see what God can do and some of us well we all know we're sinners from birth right it's part of us some of it is so that God can be glorified way back then you think about it if Jesus would have wanted to he could have said I'm going to build a world where there is no sin right and they're not going to have a chance to sin. But he didn't. And he gave them a choice. And they sinned. And it's been such a long, long time since mankind has had the ability to be able to rejoice and be free. And Jesus said, I came to give you that. To set you free. To let you see the truth of my word and the truth of what my blood accomplished for you. That you might know freedom. Recovery of sight for the blind. And to release the oppressed. I believe that sometimes when we are captive to Satan we are so held captive that we can't do anything 
but there are those that are only oppressed. Satan is working at from the outside. I don't know if you believe in demon possession or not. I do. I've seen it, been involved in it. And I know that Satan is so strong that if people let him, they, he totally will come in and control them. That's captive. That's prison. That's being in a place where you can't do anything and you need to be able to be set free. But there are a lot of cases in this world where Satan is just working on oppression from the outside. It's not that you've totally given yourself over to him or anything, but he's on the outside working on you, continually oppressing you, trying to keep you down, trying to keep you discouraged, trying to take away your hope that everything goes wrong in your life so bad that you give up hope. Don't ever give up hope. With Jesus, there is always, always hope. Always the ability to have things changed and renewed within you. The oppressed Jesus came to set free too and to change. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Did you notice there was something else in Isaiah that isn't here in Luke? Did you notice there's one little phrase that Jesus left off? What was it? The day of vengeance of our God. Because that wasn't then. So Jesus didn't bring it up. But there will be the day of vengeance. We all know that, right? We all know Christ is going to come back. There's going to be judgment. There's going to be God's wrath poured out on this world. There will be a day of vengeance. But Jesus said, right now you need to know there's hope. I don't need to talk to you about that. I don't need to let you know that one day I'm going to come back and judge you. What you need to know right now is there's freedom. And there's liberty and there's victory that can be held in your life because of what I have come to do. And what I have come to pay the penalty for you. And I have come to take back the reins of rule in the hearts and lives of people. Jesus came to set you free, to give you liberty to cure your blindness, to give you hope. And I want you to know that this morning. I want you to know that this is not just for other people. It's for you. It's for you. So what you need to do is ask yourself, where am I in the stages of all of this stuff? Am I the prisoner? Am I the captive? Am I the one totally controlled? Is it just working on me from oppression? On the outside, looking in? Where is it that Satan is active in my life and where do I need to ask God to set me free? And to release me? And to give me victory and to give me hope? Where is that in your life? You see, Jesus was declaring through this when he took the Isaiah passage both his favor and his mercy on this world. His favor that he loves you and that he wanted to give to you hope. His mercy that he died so that you might have the grace of God upon your life and the Holy Spirit in your life so that you might be renewed and refreshed and be strong to go forward in his name. And we still have that favor today and that mercy. But one day judgment will come. And the Bible continually tells us, do not be fooled. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. 
So all the way through Hebrews, you read the part, today is the day. Today is the day to be saved. Don't wait. Don't deny it. Don't let it ride and say, oh, I've got lots of time. Today is the day. And if you're already saved, it's saying, today is the day for you to give up what you're still hanging on to. Because I came for that. I came to release you, not just from total domination, but I came to release you from the fears and the frustrations and the pain and the anguish and all of those different things that are there. It's not just for you to become saved, it's for you to grow in salvation and keep growing and keep learning and keep having your eyes opened more and more to the scripture and what God wants to do in your life. Today is his day of favor. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. And that's why we have communion. That's why we have communion. To remember all of this. To remember all of this. I don't know if you have ever been smitten by God's love. If you've ever been able to just... They tell you it's good to cry, right? Have you ever cried over God's love? Have you ever cried over the, the fact that Jesus died for you? Or have you always just taken it as a, oh, logical thing, yeah, Jesus died, okay, that's good, I like that, I'll take that, I'll accept it. But have you ever been smitten by the, the anguish and the, the love and the, the longing that, that Christ wants you to know and understand in tears? There's so many times I feel like I'm so unworthy of God. So unworthy of all of the things that he's done for us by his shed blood. And sometimes I just stand there and don't sing and I just cry. I'm forgiven. I'm set free. I don't have to be what I was. I don't have to be bound by sin and Satan. I could be set free and be at liberty to rejoice in his presence in communion with him daily. I know I've been talking about prayer a lot, but if you want to know what to pray, pray for those things in Isaiah. Pray for those things in Luke chapter 4 about what Jesus came to do in setting people free. Pray that for the world. Pray that for your friends. Pray it for whoever you can think of. 